Okay, good evening everyone. Welcome to our evening Dhamma. Today, if I got my calendar correct, today is the full moon of the month of Magha. which makes this Magha, Magha Puja Magha Puja or Magha Punami Punami means the day of the full moon Magha but Magha Puja is, uh, means it's a time of commemoration Normally on this day there is um, it's an excuse and there are big celebrations or special talks and special maybe good good doings in the monasteries. What we commemorate is the what is called the Owada Patimoka. Now, in, in the beginning of the of the dispensation of the Buddha, when he began to teach, and there was no established set of rules, and so the tradition goes that he would preside over the uh, the meeting of the monks every two weeks on the full moon, on the empty moon and the new moon and would recite the Vada Patimoka I, how it started is on, on on this day apparently, I mean this is the tradition so we have this story commemorating this event when it's the Chaturanga Sanipat the fourfold meeting where a group of 1,250 arahants gathered together to listen to the Buddha's teaching and so the conjecture is that this is actually the early on in the Buddha's um, ministry for lack of a better word when he went to Rajagaha, and he stopped off on his way there. He was stopped off in uh, Gaya Sisa, and he met with these three fire ascetics. So he spent some time with his first fire ascetic, and these ascetics who worshipped fire, and through various means and uh, miracles, he converted these three brothers, along with their 1,250 followers. Is that right? Can't remember exactly. Something like that. Anyway, so these all of these monks were um, All these monks were off meditating. And suddenly one of them, through his practice, achieved liberation, became an arahant. And the story goes that he got up and decided he would go and pay respect to the Buddha and let the Buddha know of his attainment. So he walked to where the Buddha was seated up on the hill in the opening and the clearing and when he got there he sat down paid respect to the Buddha and then he turned just to make sure you know there was no it was going to interrupt anything and he saw another monk walking towards them ostensibly to do the same thing and so sure enough a second monk had become an arahant and did the same thing so he said so the first monk said I'll, I'll wait for him to come. 
So when the second monk got there, he did the same thing, turned around, and the third monk was walking. And the idea is they all came together. And one of the marvelous things about the meeting is that it was completely um, uncoordinated. There was, there was no, there was no prior engagement. And yet all 1,250 of them came together, and they were all our hunts, and so on. And so the Buddha, at that, on that day, is said to have given the Uvanda Patimokkha. And so it's just a means of really commemorating this teaching, which is a really important or a good summary. It's quite well known in the Buddhist world. One of those verses that is uh, important to Buddhist, Theravada Buddhist. So how does it go? Uh, the Buddha taught the Ovada Patimokha. Kanti paramang tapo titika. Kanti, patience, is the the highest form of Asceticism. Nibbanang paramang vadanti buddha. Nibbana is the highest, say, or is the greatest, say the buddhas. Nahi papanjito parupagati. No, there, one is not a, one is not a recluse. a renunciant who injures others. Samano hoti parang vihe tayanto. One is not a recluse who abuses others. Sabapa pasa akaranang, the not doing of any evil. Kusalasa upasampada, being full of good, full of wholesomeness. Satchitta Pariyodapanang, together with the purifying of one's own mind. Etang Buddha Anasasanang, this is the teaching of all the Buddhas. Anupavado Anupaghato, not speaking badly of anyone or harming anyone. Patimoke Jasangvaro, being restrained or guarded in regards to the patimokha, which is the ways of the community. Matanyutajapatasming, knowing moderation in eating. Pantancha sayanasanam, dwelling in a secluded lodging or having, in a, having a secluded lodging. Adijite jaa yogo etang buddha nasasana and the striving or, or exerting oneself in regards to higher minds, higher mind states. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas. And so this was considered, or is considered, to be the essence of the Buddha's exhortation. It's sort of a pithy exhortation, something that we, we recite, something that we remember. It's apparently something that all Buddhas teach as their um, admonishment or exhortation on the, on the holiday. So kanti paramang tapo patience, this is an important, this sentence I often remind my meditators of. And meditation can be such torture, but there's nothing wrong with the meditation. It's not that meditation is painful or stressful, not at all. It's just that we have, we, we lack patience. Or we possess those qualities of mind that require us uh, to be patient with 
meaning we have greed, we have anger, and to counter them we need the patience. And patience is the greatest form of asceticism, austerity, torture, really. Because in the time of the Buddha, tapas meant tap, tapa, would mean torturing yourself. Meditation can be, patience can be quite a torture. Having to sit through and, and not react, right? It's actually a lot easier, and this is why this is the highest, because it's much easier when you feel pleasure to just beat yourself and, and get rid of it, right? Self-flagellation is apparently a religious thing that well, Christians used to do it and uh, Indian ascetics used to do it Buddhists don't do that we torture ourselves in other ways right? we torture ourselves with, with nothing by, by, by refusing to engage in aversion, addiction by standing firm in the present moment, in reality, being patient. Patient with good things, patient with bad things. Nibbanang paramang wadanti buddha. So Nibbana is the highest. Again, an important point, and it's fairly simple, and there's not a lot you can say about Nibbana, it's freedom. But putting it at the top, at the, putting it at the top is important. That's what sort of distinguishes Buddhism from any other religion. Uh, other religions have their own versions of similar things, but let's be clear in Buddhism, what is the goal? It's not heaven, it's not becoming one with God or one with everything or anything. It's freedom. It's the unbinding or it's release. It's the cessation of suffering. Nahipa pajito purupa gati, and here's a f actually, well this in another section, on, uh, this is really the Bhati Moka part where what you shouldn't do. And it's just a simple admonishment that whatever we do, you know, if it falls under the harming others, speaking ill of them, um, acting or speaking in such a way as to cause harm and suffering to them, this isn't the way of a, of a reckless. I remember once. Um, There was this monk who was, what was it? He was saying something. He was calling me all sorts of awful names. He had mental problems, British man. He had been beaten as a child, and abused as a child, done a lot of drugs through his life and so on. And then he became a monk and he was a real terror. So he called me all sorts of names and blah, blah, blah. And something came up about how I didn't treat him like a monk and so on. And I said, you're not a monk. And he, he stopped and he walked away. And then he came back about an hour later with the rule book and he said, he accused me of, a, he accused me of, a, of an offense because I had, I had claimed that he had, he had committed an offense. He, he somehow saw it that I had accused him of being no longer a monk as though he had committed a, a serious offense. Anyway. I said to him, no, no, I didn't mean it that way. I said, one isn't, I, and I recited this verse, I said, you're not a monk if you abuse others. And he calmed down, actually, and we were able to talk again. He was kind of like that. He just sort of had a role with it. He would be threatening to beat you the one minute, and then we'd be sitting joking the net together the next minute. So, Yeah, life as a monk in Thailand. Never a dull moment. But it's, this is an important exhortation for us. Be clear in your minds. This isn't the way of the Buddha. Whether you're a monk or not a monk, you wish to be a true recluse, a true renunciant. You don't have to put on robes to do that. Be a follower of the Buddha, follow his way, follow his guidance. Don't abuse others. Don't harm others. Don't speak ill of them. Sabapa pasa akaranang. Don't do any evil. This is the important. This part is what everyone repeats. This is the essence of it. Kusala so upasampada. Be full of good. Be full of wholesomeness. Sachita pariyodapanang. And purify your mind. So these three things really make the essence of Buddhism. 
to not do any evil, to be full of good, and to purify your mind. Now the first two alone aren't enough, and this is important. It's, it distinguishes Buddhism from many other types of religious, spiritual, or even good practices. Because anyone who devotes their time to doing good and avoiding evil is, is ignoring the crucial aspect of that which causes us to do evil and which prevents us from doing good, and that's our mind. If your mind is not pure, if your mind is not well, it's uh, very hard to avoid evil, very hard to be full of goodness. And so our main activity really is the purification of the mind, because once your mind is pure, you can't possibly do evil. You can't possibly... Uh, you are, by nature, constantly doing good. And the other, it goes the other way. Um, it's not to say that you should just ignore evil and good. You should, you know, the evil will will take away from your practice, prevent you from progressing. And doing good will support your practice, support the, the strength of mind needed to become enlightened, to purify your mind. So these three together, etang buddha nasasanam, this is the teaching of all the Buddhas. But then he repeats, he gives another list of things that are also the teaching of the Buddha, so we think about these as well. Anupavado, anupagato, again, not, not speaking ill of others, not harming others. Patimoke, jasangwaro, being restrained by discipline. So it's for monks, it's all the rules of the monks. For lay people, it's the five or the eight precepts right livelihood and so on. All of this is the teaching of the Buddhas. Matanyutaja bhatasming, knowing moderation in eating. Now the Buddha, you see, this is uh, something that we often neglect. Be careful. Your consumption, and we can apply this not just to food, but to everything that we consume, whether it be television or whether it be internet or whether it be music or whatever careful about your consumption because what you take in affects you it changes who you are and if you're not mindful it can lead to addiction stress and suffering but certainly food is, is an important thing uh, it's the one thing that we need every day and so it, it, at the least it acts as a good base reference if you're addicted to food it's a sign you have an addictive, addictive personality. If you're addicted to good food, for example, or picky about your food, or that kind of thing. If you obsess over food, eating too much, or maybe eating not enough, mostly eating too much, or eating unhealthy food because it tastes better, or so on. Or moderation in eating. Pandancha sayanasanang. Another thing is that these are is show what a simple life it is. And there's not complex rules or rituals in Buddhism. Another way of looking at this is you know, live this way and you've got uh, you've got Buddhism in a nutshell. Pandancha sayana sanang to live in a secluded area, to have a secluded lodging. Of course the ideal is to be in a forest or on a, in a cave on a mountain or something, but even here in the city we've found a way quite remarkable, exceptional, and, and much appreciated all, uh, by all of appreciate, uh, we much appreciate all the support that has made this possible. Here we have rooms that are quiet, and we have a secluded dwelling here, where we don't sit around chatting all day and spend our time cultivating goodness, doing good things. Adijite jaa yogo and the devotion to higher mindedness or higher minds. This means going beyond the mundane states of consciousness or the ordinary states of greed, anger and delusion. To have clarity of mind and and quietude of mind and to cultivate wisdom and the super mundane state. 
the jhanas as well, and then the super mundane jhanas, engaged in the realization of nibbana. So it's quite simple. I mean, this last one is another really good way of describing it. Don't do, don't harm others. Or this is the morality part. Don't harm others. Uh, don't speak ill of others. Um, you know, follow the rules of the community and the discipline of of a Buddhist. No moderation in eating. So, besides eating, all you're doing is cultivating goodness. So. Just be careful of the necessities of life <coughs> and uh, stay in seclusion. When you're in seclusion, cultivate higher mind states. Don't just sit around and think or let yourself get distracted. This is the teaching of all the Buddhas, Etan, Buddha, Nasasana. So, we have here in the Diga Nikaya, it says, Vipasi, bud vipasi Bhagavara Hang Samasam Buddho Bhikkhu Sanghe Evang Patimokang Udisati. Vipasi is a Buddha in way in the past. Who knows, in some other, maybe in some other epoch or eon or something. Long time ago, there was another Buddha. So the idea is this is apparently what all Buddhas teach, no matter what else they may teach or not teach, they always teach this, and this is what they teach to their assembly. Either way, it's what we teach to our assembly, and I think it's a sort of an important milestone for us to mark. Well, we commemorate on this day the Owada Patimoka, on the full moon of Manga. So there you go. That's the Dhamma for tonight. Thank you all for tuning in. Wish you all good practice.